Good afternoon guys, it's James here from Sunseeker Southampton and I'm down at our headquarters in Poole today uh, to look around a 2014 one owner Sunseeker 68 Sport Yacht. Uh, it's a really nice new exciting listing to market, say one owner, all private usage, originally based in Jersey and then taken later to Menorca where she's been for the last few seasons and then returned to the UK recently in preparation for sale. Uh, she's behind me here, welcome to Juju. Very striking looking these 68s. They were originally launched as a Predator style with an electric opening carbon fibre hardtop and later came along with a sport yacht derivative like this. So you get equivalent of sort of 55 foot flybridge up top there. Very sleek, uh, three cabins, three bathrooms, two crew, garage on the back, powered by a pair of the 8V MTU 2000 series engines. They're 1270 horsepower piece, does a top speed around 33 knots. She's just over 21 meters long and we're weighing in around 37 and a half tons. Very substantial boat. Uh, she was wrapped originally from new in a black satin hull wrap from waterline up to the gunnels and then we did a silver on the top which has just been removed for sale. As a few seasons on it's starting to show its age and she's back to that classic Sunseeker Rail White unique gel coat with the black boot top stripe there above the waterline. Of course we could re-wrap if you wanted to do something funky, that's the nice benefit of wrap, being able to, to put your own colour stamp on something and turn it back into a, a standard boat when you come to sell it. Obviously those lovely big feature glass windows running through the hull sides there. Uh, we've got a lovely stainless steel anchor here up on the full peak, just having a walk around the outside hull appears in very good shape, so the boys have just machine polished the hull. She's just had a fresh coat of anti-foul props and rudders polished. Just stand back so you can take in the, the profile. It's a great looking boat. True owner operator size, so it's got that crew cabin in the back if you so wish. But most owners at this size with the benefit of things like the bow and stern thrusters. Very easy to manoeuvre. We're on a straight shaft as you can see and we come around on the stern here. Uh, we've got four underwater lights so just here you see these little steps are for when the platform itself is down. 450 kilo lifting mechanism on the back there. Uh, so the boat comes included with a Williams 385 jet tender which was colour coded to the boat originally so she's got black tubes uh, and that sits on the platform. There is a garage on the stern to the starboard side which would take a smaller Williams um, or there was the option to squeeze a jet ski in there if you so wish to carry two toys at once. So let's head on up, take a look around. I had a brief look before starting off with the camera so reasonably familiar with the boat. Uh, she presents really nicely. There's Obviously a few little bits on any second hand boat that you might want to do as a new owner going forward, but first impressions, she presents very well. So we've got a full teak package running throughout the decks, just starting to show a little bit of wear in this, but I think there's enough life in this definitely to give it a sanding and take it back to a uniform finish on there. Um, I'm not going to open the garage today, we're still with our lockdown restrictions. Everything's put to bed on the boat and I don't want to, I don't want to mess up any of the sanitization the guys are working on. Uh, so this side, this lifts up, say garage inside, and then in this side we've got the crew space. More of a storeroom really, but uh, in the cupboard here this is a Miele washer dryer, some towel storage down there. Exterior upholstery is this sort of silver colour vinyl with a little texture to it, it's quite nice. So there's a bed running transverse across here and then we've got a second bed running longitudinal here over on the port side. Tucked in there there's a little bathroom. Uh, full med pack, so we've got the letterbox style passerelle there. Uh, deck wash point here, also one up on the bow. Secondary cleats, lower level here for your transverse spring lines. 
and then coming up into the cockpit both sides we've got stern docking winches with these nice little bins for tailing off lines obviously you can see canopies set up here really for winter storage which look fully serviceable can't see any obvious tears or damage in those uh, we've got two color coded silver life rafts up top there in cradles with hydrostatic release full teak pack around the outside and there was a special option um, switch so all the deck lights around the sides are blue rather than white and I've just taken the window covers off so you have to excuse the dust on the side windows here but you've got obviously deck to full head height glass there so lots of natural light inside we'll see when we go inside shortly uh, we've got little chafing bars on the cleats here which was a factory option and then up on the foredeck locker either side handy to squeeze a couple of fenders or ropes in there and a large center line sunbang area here so we've got carbon fiber cup holders um, tilting backrests here on those three panels big skylight beneath your feet here which is feeding light into the VIP guest cabin below obviously mentioned the anchor already but we've got an upgrade says 90 meters of galvanized chain big anchor locker here with a wash down point I say in the deck here which is quite handy See a little bit of delamination in the windscreen here, which would probably be picked up on a survey, but nothing that I think would need dealing with, certainly at this stage in the boat's life. Superstructure all looks pretty good on this side. We head back round. It is possible to get down the starboard side, uh, which takes you straight back to the bathing platform. So there's only one access into the cockpit, which is here on the port side. Uh, when you first come on, it's worth noting the battery isolator switches are here and you've got controls for the passerelle and some of the lighting systems on the exterior. So nice to hand without having to go shuffling upside down in a locker. And the nice thing with a sport yacht, so you get the full benefit of a predator style cockpit here, big seating, lots of sunbathing area, but still the benefit of upstairs. If it was on a full size yacht model or a Manhattan as we call them in this size, you would have a small linear bench seat in the middle here and no sun pads. So it's a compromise, Slightly less accommodation inside on a sport yacht, but the benefit of the outdoor living space. So it's a really nice social area here. Lots of LED feature lighting up in the ceiling here. And so this big aft sun pad, which is hidden under this aft combing to about here. And then we've got about six feet aft out in the open sun. Again, silver upholstery in here, and this all looks generally in pretty serviceable shape. few ripples in it where it's obviously not a new boat anymore but not difficult to change if you wanted to to bring another color into play uh, we've got a, an AV system out here cockpit speakers there and I noticed that remote control up on the wall nice teak table which would clean back up great for dining and then of course over on the port side a small sort of wet bar preparation area we've got a fridge underneath in here uh, this one's a storage cupboard with some safety equipment in there uh, there's a burger alarm on board which is a factory upgrade nice quality on the the stairs here and you'll see on some of our later boats now we've got the drop down door system uh, it wasn't around in this sort of era so 
standard patio door arrangement. Uh, there's three sections which obviously slide across to close this off in a dark spoked tint. Uh, but we've obviously got them stacked back there in sort of port mode, which really opens up as much as you can do of any boat with patio doors, the sort of living space between cockpit and saloon. And here we have the saloon. Uh, so it's a custom interior in here. We did a number of yachts with this grey taboo oak. It's got a gloss finish on it. Very, very special. It was an expensive factory option. Works very nicely with the granite colour finish on the, the stone top there. There's lots of little detailing things like the stainless steel inlays in it. We've got a 55 inch TV in that high low box there. And this is a carbon fibre Ensign staff, which has been taken off for storage through the winter. Lovely. It's about 4,000 pound option that very nice to have. And then we've got a gray oak floor in here as well, which is a Cadorian hardwood floor. Obviously the boat's not dressed at the moment, so scatter cushions out and what have you, you can make this a real homely feel. It's very, um, very bright and modern in here. We've got white leather sofas, lovely little stainless steel inlaid details on the backrest there. Detail here in the coffee sort of puffet stool. And you try and get a feel of the wood here on the table. Got nice grain on that running all the way through. We did a few of these with a, an upper galley but this particular boat is specced as was the more common option with the galley downstairs. So you did get the benefit of this sort of dining area come breakfast bar set up. Again, LED lighting throughout the interior, which at this time was rare. Uh, there's a big skylight above us here, which is a fixed pane of glass. And then the lower helm fixed to starboard. So we've got two Besanzoni individual captain and co-pilot seats. If I just sit up at the helm here, kind of take in the view. Panoramic glass all the way around. It's a really nice boat to drive. You can still see all the way to the stern. And she had the upgrade at the time. Uh, so these are 16 inch Hatalan color navigation uh, MFDs, and then we've got Sunseeker's CM8 control panel up there for lighting, tankage, alarm systems, um, and upgrades. So the backbone system is Simrad. So we've got two IS Simrad um, multifunction displays that will do depth and temperature and things like that. Um, autopilot control. This is the little display to control the computer for the two screens for the Simrad. And then the MTU display to do the engine parameters. Uh, we're running a like a CAN bus system for touch controls here on all the buttons. Everything's nicely to hand. We've got proprietary MTU fly-by-wire throttles here. So very easy for manoeuvring. Throttle and thruster controls obviously all very close together. So this is your bow and stern thruster. There's an electric drop-down window here at the helm. These are all scatter cushions for exterior, so there's a, a nice selection there. Very nautical with the stripes. You can see a little bit of colour change in the wood here. Just before we go down the stairs, worth mentioning, you'll see here, obviously the UV sun coming in through the screens, uh, but it's it's faded nicely in a, a pretty uniform colour, so I have to say it sort of adds a bit of character to the boat. And we come down to the central lobby, which has now got the, you see the galley fully equipped. Great size refrigeration. We've got a couple of pull out freezer drawers below. Uh, big Bosch combination microwave oven. We've still got our original set of Robert Welsh 
crockery, cutlery, Royal Dalton up top there. Looks like the owner's still got a few possessions on board. We'd obviously do a full inventory to confirm exactly what's on the boat. And going with her for sale. And then there's three cabins down here. So we have a VIP guest cabin forward, which is an island centerline double. Um, you have to excuse, these are the exterior backrest cushion for the flybridge. So we've got that big skylight up there in the ceiling above us. Big glass windows on the sides. You can see here, again with opening port lights. Nice wardrobe with some pull-out drawers in the bottom. TV on the bulkhead there. Uh, quite a clever feature we brought in on this was uh, there's two doors. So this door can be closed to turn this into then uh, an ensuite here on the port side of the boat. But with this one folded back during the daytime, there's a second door here that comes across to close off the cabin and you can then utilize this heads as a, as a day head. So versatile for owners, depending on whether they're using the boat for entertaining with guests on board or just families or what have you. So there's a soaker shower up in the roof there. All very modern finishes in here, say bright white tops. We've got black stone floors and nice little inlaid stainless steel detailing here on the bulkheads and the doors. Then on the starboard side, this is currently full of cushions, so you'll have to you'll have to check out the GA online to see how this works. There's a a single bed here and a second single bed in here. Try and stand back so you can see the edge of the beds there, which give you a, a, a guest cabin or a kids cabin. Again, en suite. There's a little bedside table between the two, and a great size bathroom. Really big shower, say Tecmo vacuum flush toilets. And then we come down midships to the master. Absolutely vast bed. It's over two meters wide. Um, it was extended in length as well as a custom request for the owner. Obviously the quietest part of the boat, at least roll in here. So we've got large glass windows, both with an opening center port light there and the fixed bonded panels. There's a nice little vanity station here. on the starboard side and they cross on the port. A nice little sofa arrangement. Big TV, say that's about 32 inch on the bulkhead there. Again, good size shower, we've got some little towel sockets there for storage. And then across here, there's a good size walk-in wardrobe, which is rare on something this size. Plenty of full height hanging and locker space in there. Um, it's said that the owner has only slept on board actually five nights in the entire time he's owned the boat. Uh, used mainly as a day boat. Obviously you see from the condition inside, presenting very nicely, it really gives the impression it's not had a lot of use at all. Machinery wise, access is in through the cockpit sole here. We'll just climb down. Climb down the ladder. And you can see these 8V MTU 2000 series engines. 
You can see this is the base of the, the garage here from the starboard aft side of the platform. Big sea fire suppression system there. We've got a, um, a wash down hose here. Say so six seasons in, the boat still presents very well in here. Everything's very clean. Rolls Royce parent company being MTU engines. Say a full survey would just confirm that the boat presents as well as she first appears, but I say on first impressions, she looks pretty good down here. Uh, there's a machinery space here in the back aft quarter where you've got access through to things like rudder boxes, uh, generators here. So that's a 19 kilowatt Onan generator in a soundproof box. We've got things like the hot water tank over here, hydraulic packs for the passerelle on the platform. Centerline fuel tank here. We're holding 3,000 litres of diesel. So we've got a range of around 300 miles and 800 litres of water on board. So plenty, plenty of tankage for going away for several days at a time. These perform really well. It's um, say fully planing hull, 33 knots ish with the with these engines, real um, real sports boat to drive. You can get the, the gunnels in the water when you want to, to be a hooligan and impress your friends, but equally very, very capable as a long distance cruiser with the family and friends on board. So now up here on the flybridge, so you have to use your imagination without the cushion set up. So we've got a big U-shaped seating area here, starboard aft, have a look under here. Again, nice teak table, as per what's downstairs in the cockpit. Lots of storage here. You'll see lockers for snorkeling gear, cleaning equipment, all the inevitable boat paraphernalia that we have on board. Um, up top, we've got a full length pram hood style bimini and everything up top's been painted. Um, she has got a sat CV system on board. Probably need to update the decoders by now, but not an expensive thing to do. So we've got two domes, one will be a dummy, and then the radar chair up there is also black with a four foot six kilowatt Simrad radar. Uh, here in the back quarter, we've got wet bar set up. So we've got a Kenyan electric griddle. So top loading cool box, nice little sink ice maker, storage cupboard there. There's a further wash down point in the base. Uh, you'll see the door here is carbon fiber, exposed weave, that's nice to touch. And then up forward, so that T-shaped backrest we saw in the VIP guest cabin forward, that sits on here, giving you seating both forward and also the little sun pad opposite the helm. Again, storage underneath all these lockers. Uh, that was a custom little inlaid set up for some crockery and glass storage for outdoors. Just stand up so you can see the, the foredeck layout from up top here. And then helm on the port side. A mirror image much of what we've got downstairs. Um, so these are 12 inch Simrad NSS, uh, the Evo ones, the original Simrad multi-function screens again with like speed and depth fusion stereo remote control spotlight thruster controls here so from a maneuvering point of view we can see down the stairs there to the bathing platform we can see down the port side deck here there's a handy little pull up clear acrylic screen here just to take the wind chill away on not such nice days. Uh, showing our age a bit here, things like the stitching on the steering wheel and there's a little bit of 
corrosion on the switches here so most of this will clean up quite nicely but not expensive in the grand scheme of things on a yacht of this size to change if you want to put a stamp on yourself in the future so there you have it I say loaded up with options ready to go recent servicing on the engines even a tender to go on the back here um, you can see the little fittings in the deck here where the chocks would attach so launch and recovery very straightforward it's a great option in the market we just sold a used stock boat down in the south of france uh, currently only two of these for sale on the european market with the second one being down in france fits the marinas here in the uk and equally at home in the warmer mediterranean or american climate so it's a great option on the market say so asking 1.25 million pounds x tax offers invited on that say so owner motivated to sell but we believe we priced it well and i think the first genuine clients on board to come and see her looking for something like this are going to find it hard to find something better certainly with that very very special interior if you like that look uh, this will probably be one of the only boats that you'll find anywhere for sale in the med or the wider market um, so if you like any more information my mobile is plus four four seven seven four seven six eight six five eight seven or drop me an email to james at sunseekersouthampton.com i can run you through the specs in a bit more detail or if there's something else on the market perhaps a little bit larger smaller or similar just as a comparison we can talk through options and go from there i hope you enjoyed the tour and we look forward to hearing from you soon